I'd like to call the September 8th uh, Board of Commissioners meeting to order. First order of business is the invocation by our County Manager, Ms. Sharon Russell. Thank you and good morning, Chairman Bright and Commissioners. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and conduct the business of Onslow County. Lord, be with our community, shield and guide us in everything that we do during these unprecedented times. Father, we pray for the men and women in our armed forces who serve our country with tremendous courage, commitment, and sacrifice. May all we do this day bring you honor and glory, now with deep respect and reverence for the faiths, beliefs, and traditions of those gathered here today. Join me in a moment of silence. Amen. Our pledge by Mr. Ben Warner, Assistant County Manager. Please stand. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to recognize our sheriff, uh, Sheriff Hans Miller. Thank you, sir, for being here. Uh, Colonel Chris Thomas from the Sheriff's Office, thank you, sir, for being here. And I believe I've seen Dr. Barry Collins from the superintendent of our schools. Thank you for being here. Did I miss any miss anyone? Okay, we ask uh, all that's in attendance to please set your cell phone to silent or vibrate mode. The board offers the public one opportunity to speak during the meeting. Comments should be limited to no more than five minutes and may be on any item or issue upon which the Board of Commissioners has control. In accordance with the Board's adopted rules of procedure, comments uh, shall, res uh, commissioners shall reserve responses, if any, for the commissioner's comment period on the agenda, which is at the end of the meeting. With no other items to be considered, I would entertain a motion to adopt the meeting agenda. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Is there any item on the consent agenda that any commissioner would like to have removed for later discussion? Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, Ms. Russell, we are already at item number three, which is uh, public comment. So do we have folks signed up? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have four citizens who have signed up to speak during our public comment period. I would remind everyone that citizens may address the board for no more than five minutes. Please take your seat at five minutes. Citizens will be acknowledged in the order in which they have signed up. We ask that you approach the podium and state your name and address. We also ask that speakers address the board as a whole and not individual commissioners. Commissioners will hold any reaction or comment or answer to the end of the meeting during commissioner's comments. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience are not permitted and speakers are expected to be civil in their language and presentation. Any comment where the primary purpose is to promote a business or candidacy is not permitted. And again, there is a five minute limit. At this time, I'm happy to welcome Mr. Alan Futrell to the podium. Good morning, I'm Alan Futrell from Richlands, North Carolina. I stand before you to speak to an issue that concerns us all, the proposed acquisition of a new senior center. As humans, we cling to socializing with others. It's, it's the most primary thing we have built into our DNA. A new larger senior center will provide easier access to a majority of our constituents in Onslow County to provide them with the ability to attend a new senior center framed and structured to fill the county's senior citizens' needs. Our current building is occupied by at least three entities. We don't have full use of the facility. This does not provide the needed space for all of our activities to be performed fully as intended. The location of this proposed new building will provide much easier access through the use of our transit system, 
or friends to transport those, those who may not be able to get to the senior center by themselves. Just by being closer, I expect a significant influx of new members in our growing aging population of the elderly, widows and widowers of our heroes. We can do no less. The opportunity to place this in Jacksonville will provide a much easier way for those that see no one all day. They have no contact with anybody. If we can get them to the senior center, what a boon, what a boost to, 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 their, to their being to, to speak with peers on whatever subject they may need to or, or, or entertain by, by performing some of the things that are available at the senior center. It's, it's just so important that these seniors get a chance to get out. And we should, if there's one thing we need to serve in this county, it's the senior citizens. My God, they put us all here. They paid the price. They provided for all of us. Let's give them something to do. And with this new larger building, the possibilities are limitless. We, we can provide whatever they want to do. If it's reading classes, we can do that. Book club, we can do that. Macrame, I don't care. It's whatever they choose to do by the director and, the, and their employees. But give us that opportunity to provide all this. And it's, it's, it's just humane in, in, in my opinion. I stand in, in support of the proposed purchase of the new senior facility. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Futrell. I now welcome Ms. Judy Kropp to the podium. Good morning. This is my very first time at a commissioner's meeting, so I'm very nervous. But I want you to know I'm here on behalf of the purchase of new the River of Life property for Onslow County Senior Services, which I have been a member of since 2014. I've been the, I'm just I'm just nervous. Please excuse me. The traffic on 258 for the entry and the exit of the center is really really treacherous for us. So this would be this new place would be just ideal for us. Plus it's closer to where I live. <laughs> I can I can get there in five minutes. The building needs many many repairs where we're at and it's old like me. Joints are stiff, heat and air units are kinda wishy-washy, bad plumbing and mold. It's very hazardous to our health. Most rooms and offices are too small for all that utilize it. And we as seniors deserve better. And I don't understand why there is so much negativity selfishness and greed in the county that feel that elders are not entitled to a better place. Thank you for allowing me to voice my opinion. And I have brought a brochure from the senior services. It's a newsletter. There's a schedule, there's a, a menu from Monday through Friday. I utilize this place five days a week from 7.30 in the morning till 11.30 when I leave. I do all kinds of exercise classes. There's all sorts of trainings. The personnel there is out for me. They're out for my, my best. I can go to them anytime with medical reason, medical, personal, anyway. The director on down are just fantastic to us. And I couldn't do it without them. Just know that this is part of my life. It's my home away from home. And I would like to have a bigger and better place. And thank you very much. And I do have this if anybody does care to look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Crop. I now welcome Mr. Tony Bryan to the podium.
Good morning. <clears throat> My name's Tony Bryan. Quite a few years ago, I played softball for the First Baptist Church of Jacksonville. And I found out we were playing all of our games inside the city limits of Jacksonville. And I had to pay an extra 20 bucks to use their facilities. Um, the, um, there was <clears throat> most of the team was Marines. And since the city of Jacksonville had annexed the uh, population of the Marines into the city, they didn't have to pay anything. So here's a Marine from Timbuktu, Minnesota, playing softball free in the city of Jacksonville. And I have to pay 20 bucks because I live just outside the city limits. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the same thing's going on today. If you want to play pickleball at the uh, Anywhere, the only place I know is Jacksonville Commons. And uh, you have to pay a fee to the city of Jacksonville if you live outside the city limits. I'm all for the, pur the purchase and uh, moving the, centers, the senior center to the new location. But I want to make sure that the city of Jacksonville doesn't in any way get its scrubby hands on in any of the uh, uh, activities, I shouldn't say activities, but uh, any kind of way that they can make money off of it being in the city of Jacksonville. That's my only concern. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Our final speaker this morning is Jean Reboltz. If you would like to approach the podium, Ms. Reboltz. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jean Repholtz. Sorry, I look like this. I just came from the Discovery Gardens, which is right behind the Extension Building. I'm a master gardener. I've been a master gardener for 23 years, and we put in thousands of hours of work into the Discovery Gardens. And um, I just want to know, if the seniors leave, are we going to get to keep that building for the Extension offices for 4-H, for all our agri agriculture and our farmer's market building, uh, horticulture agent, we, we do classes in that building. And then after a class, we go out to the gardens and do, do a, a physical uh, thing. Like let's say we're talking about pruning trees in the class and we can go out in that garden and prune trees and such. We use that building if, if an activity is, if it's gonna rain, we can use that big community a big room for meetings and events. So I, I just hope we can still keep that building. Uh, please don't move our extension building away from that property so we can still um, use the, like the 4-H uses the farmer's market for summer camps. And um, that, that's what my main concern is because we don't want to have to drive from one building all the way to the gardens to do something. And, so please, I hope you put money into fixing it or maybe rebuilding it, but um, we really like the rooms there for training and classes. Uh, yeah, just please fix it. Don't move the building. We, we use it a lot, and uh, I think the seniors also use that garden a lot. It's very relaxing and comforting, and we have that, we just put all that money into that big pond, the gazebo. Now we have a children's garden there, so please keep the extension there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Rebels. And that concludes our, co our public comment period. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ms. Russell. Well, we'll move to item four now. It's a uh, proclamation. And I'll turn that over to you for the reading the proclamation and um, the presentation of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. We do have one proclamation this morning. I'll read it into the record. State of North Carolina, County of Onslow Proclamation, National Library Card Sign-Up Month, September 2021. Whereas signing up for a library card is the first step towards academic achievement and lifelong learning. And whereas libraries play an important role in the education and development of children and library programs serve students of all ages, from early literacy to homework help to GED classes. And whereas librarians lead the way in creating inclusive spaces and developing diverse collections for children and people of all backgrounds to connect and learn together, 
And whereas libraries bridge the digital divide by providing a full range of information and services to children and adult learners, and whereas libraries open a world of infinite possibilities through resources and services to help people pursue their passions and give students the tools to succeed in school and beyond. And whereas over 35,000 residents of Onslow County have library cards and more than 275,000 people visit our public library locations annually. And now therefore be it proclaimed that the Onslow County Board of Commissioners acknowledges September as National Library Card Sign-Up Month in Onslow County and encourages all citizens to sign up for their own library card today, presented this eighth day of September 2021 by the Onslow County Board of Commissioners. And I believe that Chairman Bright has asked Commissioner Scott to present this proclamation to our Onslow County Library Director, Virginia March, and members of her staff. Thank, now thank you for coming out today, and today we are privileged to have our Library Director with us. Um, today we recognize the National uh, Library Card Sign-Up Month. Currently, Ons now Onslow County is fortunate to have 36,000 citizens that already have that honor to come in and get books. We also have 300,000 different types of material that they can select from. So on behalf of the Onslow County Board of Commissioners, I thank you for what you do. I thank you for what you're going to do. And we've got a little challenge for you. So once you accept this, this is the challenge. I need to know the number that we currently have for last year that signed up for our new patriots for the library. The library in our four locations that give 80% sign up, new sign up patriots for this year, you're gonna be Lorenai's guests for dinner after December 31st. That's the cutoff at 12 noon, December 31st. Then you're gonna be our guests to whatever restaurant that Laura picks, okay? <laughs> I have a boss too, okay? <laughs> but it truly, libraries are the door opener for the future of our children. We have let the electronic age, but it all started with our books. We must never leave our books behind. And I thank you for what you're doing, what you're going to do. And I understand you have a young lady with us today. Yes, we do. One more presentation. Right. Thank you, Commissioner Scott, Commissioners, Ms. Russell, for your support of the library, not just during library card sign-up month, but throughout the year. And yes, today, and rather than hearing from me, you're going to hear from one of our team volunteers, Ms. Isabella Gray, and what she finds important about having a library card. Good morning, County Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Isabella Gray. I'm a current teen volunteer at the Onslow County Public Library. I'm a homeschool student in seventh grade. Thank you for taking time out of your, out of your day to listen to my speech about why I enjoy having a library card. Having a library card makes me feel mature. I have to be responsible with keeping track of my library card and any items I borrow from the library. And the library trusts me with their items when I rent them. The library also has many rules that I need to follow. All of these things make me feel responsible and mature, which is why I enjoyed getting my library card a few years ago. The older I get, the more privileges I receive with my library card ownership. A few of the privileges are renting books, technology access, and renting movies. My favorite items to rent are books because each one contains a new adventure. I'm still embracing the technology available to me via the library. Renting movies allows my family and I to enjoy classics and newer films on our movie nights. I am grateful for the opportunity to enjoy all the privileges the library has to offer. Another reason I enjoy having a library card is because I get to be part of my community. My dearest friendships have been made at the library. Classes offered by the library provide an opportunity to meet new friends from our community. I give back to the library and my community by being a volunteer. I volunteer because I love the library and want others to enjoy all the library has to offer. These are reasons I value owning a library card. I highly encourage others to get one as well so you can take advantage of all the features the Onslow County Library has to offer. 
Thank you, Ms. Virginia March, for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, County Commissioners, for your time and attention. I hope I encourage you to get a lot. Now, Ms. Gray, <laughs> you have just challenged every student in Onslow County to get a library card. And because you are so dedicated to what you are doing and for your leadership as a county commissioner and from the board of Ons the Onslow County Commissioners, I want to present you with a challenge coin to keep moving on for Thank yourself. You. And God bless you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Item um, 4B, National Association of Counties 2021 Achievement Award Annual Services. I think uh, Assistant Manager Glenn Hargett is going to present that to us. First thing we want to do is introduce our new Animal Services Director. This is Stephanie Schweitzer. And she comes to us after an incredible career, and she has dedicated her life to being animal services and to do that type of work. And so we're very honored to have her with us today, and this is a good thing. Um, we're inspired by her life work, and one of the things that inspired me to come be a part of this team with the county has been the work that Sharon Russell has done to empower people to make suggestions from every part of our organization. This high performance organizational model uh, really looks at people who come up with great ideas to advance them. And one of those great ideas was what these people came up with. And now it's received national recognition for the work they have done to try to find economical ways of doing spay and neutering um, at the Animal Services Office. So it is with great pleasure that, um, Stephanie, let's have you stand here and you present these to your staff for on behalf of the National Association of Counties, the, the award that came from the financial management side for their spay and neutering clinic. Congratulations. Thank you. So this is a great thing. Anything you'd like to say? I'd like to say thank you for such a warm welcome, and I'm excited to be part of this great team of Onslow County employees. Thank you. Just want to say, Dr. Deneen, I forgot to recognize yeah. her, Dr. Deneen. Dr. Deneen, I'm the full-time <laughs> shelter vet um, at Onzo County Animal Services. I just want to say thank you for the access to these wonderful resources at the shelter, and we look forward to seeing how far we can get. Thank you all. Our next item is uh, surplus land. Uh, Ms. Brenda Reese is going to present that to us, her finance officer. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, Commissioners. The county received an offer in the amount of $9,500 to purchase surplus land located on New River Inlet Road. The parcel number is 036343 and is approximately 0.13 of an acre in size. If no upset bids are received within the 10-day period after posting the notice, the property, property will be sold to the offeror. If the county receives any upset bids, the final offer will be brought back to the board for consideration. It is respectfully requested that the board declare the property as surplus and approve resolution number 21-018, which authorizes the sale of the property using the negotiated offer, advertisement, and upset bid process, and authorize the chairman to sign the resolution. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried in hand, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, variable message board uh, for North Carolina Emergency Management. That's uh, Mr. Norm Bryson is going to present that to us. Good morning, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. This item is a memorandum of understanding with the state of North Carolina for us to receive a, a mobile variable message board sign that we would be able to use anywhere around the county to be able to put out, to put signs out. We already have one like this one, and this would give us an actual second sign for us to have. So these signs also come with a AM transmitter, so if we were doing evacuations, we would be able to post these up and actually broadcast a message 
messages across them as well. There is no cost to the county for receiving this sign and uh, taking on this MOU. And if we were to buy this, it would cost us about twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. It had been previously housed by Hope County, and they chose that they didn't want the sign anymore. So we were respectfully requesting that the Board of County Commissioners consider accepting the mobile variable message board on behalf of Onslow County and authorize the county manager to sign the MOU on their behalf. A motion and a second. Any discussion? I think that's a good thing to have that because we are always in the target for hurricanes and luckily, knock on wood, if we can find some that we can get past this year, but I think the notification Having that sign is exactly an excellent idea. I did have a question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if something happens to the sign and it gets damaged or destroyed, are we responsible for that? We will. We are responsible for maintaining any repairs and stuff. It actually becomes ours, so we will maintain the the sign just like the the other one that we already have. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is um, State Library of North Carolina ADAPTS grant. Um, I think Ms. Marsh will present that to us, our library director. Okay. Is it the grant or is it state aid first? State aid? Okay, thank you. Good morning, Chairman Bright, Commissioners, Ms. Russell. Today I'm presenting the application for state aid to public library funds. Article 14, Chapter 153A of the North Carolina State Statutes provides for North Carolina public libraries to receive funds appropriated annually by the state legislature. These grants are available to any public library that establishes its eligibility according to the rules and regulations for the allocation of state aid to public libraries. When allocating state aid to public libraries, but the library's service area population and per capita income have an impact in determining the amount of state aid allocated to each library. Within Onslow County, state aid to public libraries assist in purchasing material for the library system. This includes books, both print and digital, audiobooks, DVDs, music CDs, and periodicals. The estimated state aid for Onslow County for fiscal year 21-22 is $232,176. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners consider the application for state aid to public libraries, and if approved, authorize the chair and county manager to sign the state aid to public libraries application. Second. Second. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> All opposed, motion carries. I think next one's yours also. Yes, Sorry, yes I got sir. A little bit. That's okay. The State Library of North Carolina has awarded $44,455 to Onslow County Public Library as part of their State Library NC ADAPT Library Services and Technology Act Grant Program. This program supports local library projects that target high need communities to address digital inclusion, expand digital network access, purchase internet accessible devices, and support community needs. Building connected communities are essential to the success of Onslow County Public Library's mission. So utilizing these grant funds, the library plans to continue to build and enhance digital learning, career readiness programs, technology training to meet the needs of the community with devices, hotspots, and training for patrons. Programming will be presented to enhance citizen technology skills, including workforce training, senior technology support, basic digital skills, coding, and more. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners consider the SLNC ADAPTS Grant Award, and if approved, authorize the County Manager to sign the Grant Award Agreement. I hear a motion. motion. A motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion, any questions for Ms. Marsh? I appreciate you applying for all these yes. grants and saving the taxpayers yes. money. Yes, and I want to thank my staff who are here who did apply for that grant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Marsh. Thank you. The next item is E, uh, North Carolina uh, CCHO <coughs> Supplement Local Health Department increase in vaccine uptake. I think that's Ms. Hoover. I know you have a busy schedule. 
Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. So the first item that I have for you today is NACHO, the National Association of City and County Health Officials. You may remember that back in April, we were awarded a $25,000 grant to promote vaccination uptake in our community. We know that the COVID-19 pandemic um, reduced some access to routine childhood immunizations, and we did not have as many people immunized against influenza last fall. NACHO recognized that and made funding available for for health departments to work to increase the reach of these life-saving vaccines. Throughout the projects that they funded, they had realized some cost savings, they had additional funds available, and they awarded those additional funds to their current grantees. By that, we were offered an additional $10,000 to continue this program's work. Therefore, it's respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners accept the grant funding in the amount of $10,000 for this continuation of the grant and allow staff to complete the, the paperwork that is needed to allocate these funds. There is no county match required. Motion. A motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Any discussion? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I had a call from a constituent last night concerning vaccines, and they were saying that the leadership, not you, but the leadership wasn't doing enough to promote the vaccine. Do you have any idea what we could do as a board or the, uh, even the city council? They were um, named in this also. Is there anything we can do to promote the vaccine to get more people uh, to get the vaccine and try to get a handle on this virus? Absolutely. So yesterday we hit the 100,000 vaccines given in Onslow County. So those are individuals that have received at least one dose. It was It's actually 100,863 as of this morning. What is most compelling to individuals to try to encourage them to get vaccinated is that individuals that um, have received the vaccine kind of share that message and tell their story and explain why it matters to them. What we have seen in lots of healthcare settings is, is this, um, you know, kind of storytelling Telling, or people sharing why they chose to receive the vaccine, that they did it to protect their parents, their grandparents. In healthcare settings, we certainly promote vaccination to protect our patients and to preserve the integrity of the healthcare workforce. We need these essential frontline workers to be at work, to, to be able to care for others. And I think that message carries over into governmental settings and, and other facilities as well, is that we really need our workforce to be present and be strong and be healthy, to be able to continue the services that, that we need for our society to function well. Okay, well, as commissioners, I want to do everything I can to uh, promote people getting the vaccine. Of course, we you know, can't make it necessarily man mandated, but um, there's people that just oblivious to the reason for getting it, and they just, I've, I've got relatives like that, that they just don't want to take the vaccine, and I think that's our... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's our only tool in our toolbox. I mean, the vaccination is the best way for us to get a handle on this pandemic and to really come to a place where we can control it. What we do know is that no vaccine is 100% effective. We know that our vaccines that we have are safe. We now have one that is that is fully approved by the FDA. We know that it prevents severe disease, being sick enough to be required to be in the hospital in most cases. And additionally, the deaths that we're seeing are not among those who are fully vaccinated. So sharing these messages of, you know, that you are given protection whenever you take the vaccine, that there is benefit to it, that, you know, the, the healthcare systems have been under such stress these past 18 plus months, that this is a strategy that we really need people to buy into. While I think that, you know, there, there are a lot of issues that go with mandating vaccines, the only benefit that I think that we might get from that is people need a good reason sometimes. And what we see is those who have just been apathetic and haven't found time, haven't made time, sometimes a mandate is their good reason to, to decide to take the vaccine. So I think it's something that employers should definitely think about, and if they recognize their staff as being those essential frontline workers that they need to be there and be present, they should kind of approach it from that perspective, that that might be the nudge that some of their employees have or really need to, to make them think and act a little bit differently. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I thought uh, since we are streamed live that people could actually hear it from our health director, uh, some of the things that we're facing and um, 
I think it, any of the other board members got. <clears throat> it's it just that I think it's incumbent on the commissioners to also put out there about the vaccination. There, you know, putting a mandate is not is, is not going to work because I don't believe in putting out a mandate for shots, period. Because that's an infringement of your rights. But everybody has a right to choose. But as commissioners, you know, we're we're. Uh, subjected to social media, we should use our social media channels as best way we can to promote or try to persuade people who are on the fence to get the vaccination. If you choose not to get the vaccination, that's on you, okay? Plain and simple, that's up to you. That's not, that's not my right or anyone else's right to make that decision for you, but it's, it's our personal responsibility as commissioners to make sure our citizens are aware that the vaccinations are out there. They're not only out there for you, they're out there for the medical providers at the pharmacies, they're out there for Star Med, places like that, and encourage to people to take their vaccination, okay? I'm vaccinated, I think half the board or most of the board is vaccinated as well. And you know, there's varying opinions on taking the vaccination or not taking the vaccination. To be quite honest, I'm getting sick and tired of hearing all the opinions, okay? I just try to read what I can and you know, people can argue all day long and that's fine. Spend your time arguing about you know, is the vaccination good or whether a mask is good, I, I really don't care but do what's right for you and with your family. And I think that you should be persuaded if you want the vaccination, come talk to me, I'll tell you what it did to me. Jack will tell you what it did to him and, and you know what kind of uh, repercussions that we had after the vaccination. I'd rather suffer the consequences of the vaccination than the consequences of COVID-19, period. So that's on you guys, but I think as, as commissioners, we should push that. We should push that on our own social media and any chance we get to put newsletters out there to encourage people to get the vaccination if they want to. Period. Maybe we have we a motion. Any other Maybe discussion? we should make a video. All of us say two minutes about why we got the vaccine. Be a good idea. Be a good little video. That was that was suggested by the caller last night, the constituent, that we do. And I think Ms. Russell's doing some live videos with you and um, Dr. Penny uh, Burlingame deal from the hospital and encouraging people to to consider getting the vaccine and I, I don't want to recognize another person in here but Dr. Collins uh, had the school board last night chose to go with the mask mandate on a monthly basis to do evaluations. I thought that was uh, uh, at least show some uh, support for keeping the spread down. I don't, I don't know if that's going I'm not a doctor. Nobody up here. I don't think none of us are doctors are we? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I encourage people to talk to their doctor and see their doctor and let, and let their doctor tell them and advise them what to do with that. I think that's probably one of the most things that I've been pushing all along. But anyway. Um, well, Jack, I think what Roy said is a good idea. I said, we, he, he, individually, we did it for the census, 2020 census, 20, to get that done. Let's do it again. Let's do it for the vaccine. I think we ought to be videotaped, each, each commissioner. Could we, could we arrange that to have the commissioner stand shoulder to shoulder to, to uh, promote this and, and uh, maybe Absolutely. have- Absolutely. And have we, the, you could do it as individuals or we, you could do it as a group. We'll work on that for you. And, and have, maybe you could be there too to you know, have the scientific part of it. Uh, the science is there. I mean, you look at the hospital uh, stays and you see the people that's in there that has the vaccine and then the people that that's in there that don't have the vaccine and then the numbers are just, I mean, it's just staring you in the face about it. So I think that's a good idea. I think uh, I think all of us would probably participate in that and uh, try to promote this as much as we could. Maybe we can get the sheriff to, to step in with us. <laughs> um, any further? All in favor of the motion? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I thought it was a good opportunity to, to let people know what we were thinking. Absolutely. And you were thinking. Well, we knew what you were thinking. <laughs> I think I've got your next one as well. <laughs> okay, well, we'll let you do that one too. So the next item that we have on the agenda is the epidemiology and laboratory capacity reopening schools um, and a health liaison, a school health liaison. The Division of Public Health um, in North Carolina recognizes that school settings are one of our vulnerable areas. We certainly heard last night how important um, COVID and keeping our kids in school um, are to, you know, to having a normally functioning society right now. To that end, the Division of Public Health has made funding available to public health departments to um, fund school liaisons to engage with those school health staff 
in the school system to investigate clusters and to make sure that we have robust processes for contact tracing, coordination of testing, and getting those kids back in school in addition to offering vaccination to those who are eligible. Therefore, it is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners approve this funding in the amount of $115,000 for ELC reopening schools, school health liaison funding, and allow staff to complete necessary documentation and allocate these funds in support of that initiative. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those as well. Motion. Motion. I hear a second. Second. Oh, I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. Uh, item uh, G, Airport uh, Small Community Air Service Development Program Grant. Uh, Mr. Chris Weiss, our airport director, will present that to us. Good morning, commissioners. <clears throat> it's often been said that air service development is economic development. So the item we have before you this evening or today is the uh, Small Community Air Service Development Grant. This grant is something we competed for for several years and uh, we finally finally achieved or received this grant. In July, the, uh, the county received notice of the award for the 2019 Small Community Air Service Development Grant in the amount of $700,000. This is used to attract additional air service to the Albert J. Ellis Airport. The grant will supplement existing marketing and air service development funds, so there, there's some match. Then will be combined with fee waivers, minimum revenue guarantees, and other incentives to attract additional air service to OHA by mitigation, mitigating a portion of the risk associated with new air service. In, 20, or in 2005, the county received a nearly identical grant from the same U.S. Department of Transportation program. And with the community support, Delta Airlines initiated air service in, in 2007 and remains an active partner at the airport over 14 years later. This service on Delta was successful from the start and is expected that the service to DFW, which we're targeting, will experience similar success. It is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners accept the SCADSI grant approve the project ordinance, and if, uh, if approved, authorize the chairman to sign up the documents on behalf of the county commissioners. I have a motion from the board. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? You might tell them what the DFW stands for. Dallas-Fort Worth. Dallas-Fort Worth. Yes. This is good stuff. Over half that, of our- That's some good stuff. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Uh, close to half of our passengers' final destinations are west of the Mississippi. That's why we believe Dallas-Fort Worth makes an ideal, ideal uh, target. Any further? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. I think item H is yours also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In April, the county initiated, um, excuse me, the project title is Airport Pavement Rehabilitation and Improvements. In April, the county initiated a multi-phase project that would design and construct rehabilitation of runway 23, taxiway and taxiway alpha, as well as associated airfield pavements, and the construction of an aircraft holding pad. Design of the first phase, which is the taxiway and the holding apron is complete, and construction has been successfully bid. Typically, these projects require 10% state and local match. However, recent federal legislation related to the pandemic recovery has removed this requirement. Uh, and the project will be funded at 100% by the Airport Improvement Program uh, grant issued by the FAA. The FAA has awarded Onslow County a grant in the amount of $5,888,171 to fund this project. Three bids for the construction were received and the lowest responsive and responsible bidder was Barnhill Contracting Company of Rocky Mount, who submitted a bid of $5,083,385. Barnhill also committed to exceed the 6% disadvantaged business enterprise goal for the project. Construction administration and resident inspection are also be pro proposed to be completed by RSNH Engineering, the amount of $240,407. is anticipated that the runway construction phase will be bid in fiscal year 2022 once funding becomes available. Uh, it is respectfully requested that the Board of Commissioners accept the FAA grant, 
authorize or approve the amended project ordinance, authorize the RSNH work authorization, and award Barnhill Contracting the construction contract, and if approved, authorize the chairman to sign the documents on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Hear a motion from the board? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion for the grant, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Russell, I think you can handle the appointments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. We do have several appointments today. The first will be for the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, JCPC, um, is a statewide organization in each county that galvanizes our community leaders to reduce and prevent juvenile crime. JCPC board members are appointed by the County Board of Commissioners and meet monthly. The following individuals have provided a citizen participation application, and these are uh, have been certified and are in the clerk's office. I'm gonna read out the names in just a moment. We do respectfully request that you approve a two-year term for each of these individuals, which will expire June 30th, 2023. Their names, Brendan Gartner, for seat number one, the superintendent designee. Lloyd Bolton, seat number four, district attorney designee. Megan Howard, seat number 12B, in the under age of 21 category. James Andrew Lanier in seat number 13, juvenile defense attorney. And Stephanie Kane, seat number 22, the commissioner's appointee. Motion to appoint the individuals named. So moved. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion for the appointment signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Ms. Russell. Thank you very much. The Onslow County Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee strives to effectively assess the wishes of the citizens of Onslow County regarding the needs, the planning, and management for the quality of parks, facilities, and recreation programs while advocating for the improvement of these programs. Ms. Allison Westfall, Jacksonville Township, term has expired. Ms. Westfall has expressed an interest in continuing her service and has completed a citizen's participation application for consideration. No other individuals expressed an interest in serving at this time, and the application is on file and has been certified by the clerk's office. At this time, I respectfully request that you consider reappointment of Ms. Allison Westfall in the Jacksonville category for a three-year three term expiring June 30th, 2023. Motion from the board. Motion to approve. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Airport Advisory Commission, Ms. Russell. The Airport Advisory Commission is comprised of seven members and one commissioner liaison with the mission of advising the airport director and the board of commissioners on issues related to the operation and development of the county's Albert J. Ellis Airport. Mr. Garland Tootin, at large category, has a term that expires on September 30th, 2021. Mr. Keith Fountain, Mr. Gerald March, and Mr. Harry, Harry Simpson have all expressed an interest in this categorical seat and have all submitted citizen participation applications for consideration. A ballot has been provided for the commissioner's convenience and that is the way that the action will be taken today on this appointment. No other individuals expressed an interest in serving and the vacancy was advertised. The applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. The blue ballots that you have at your seat need to be signed by each individual commissioner. And I'll also let the public know that these written ballots are available for public inspection beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. tomorrow in the uh, county administration office upstairs on third floor.
Thank you, Chairman Brighton, Commissioners. Keith Fountain has been elected as the representative for the Airport Advisory Commission, and we are having a little bit of a microphone situation. Um, our next board appointment is also going to be a vote. This is for the Onslow County Hospital Authority Board. The Onslow County Hospital Authority Board at its regularly scheduled meeting on July 29th, 2021, voted unanimously to forward nominations for your consideration for reappointment or appointment of incumbents whose terms expire on September 30th, 2021. Seat number one, Elizabeth Atkins, who is an incumbent. Seat number seven, Michael Royce Bennett, who is an incumbent. Seat number 10, Stephen Scarborough, an incumbent. Seat number 13, Virginia Albano, DPM, who is also an incumbent. Ms. Julia Collins also submitted her name pursuant to section seven of the joint resolution as someone who is interested in serving. All of the applications are on file and have been certified by the clerk's office. Ballots have been provided for the commissioner's convenience. Please sign these. These are the multicolored ballots that you have before you. And just to let the public know once again, these ballots will be available for public examination beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. tomorrow in the county admin building. Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask the board to recuse me from voting on seat number seven since I'm on the ballot. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor of uh, Commissioner Bennett recusing himself, signify by saying aye. 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 You are recused. On, on your ballot. Thank you. All your ballots. We want all of them. There you go. You can have them all. <laughs>
Thank you for fixing the microphone, whoever was able to fix that. We appreciate that. Um, we do have a majority vote on each of the categories, and I will announce them now as soon as I get them in order. Seat number one, Elizabeth P. Atkins. Seat number seven, Julia Collins. Seat number 10, Stephen Scarborough. Seat number 13, Dr. Virginia Albano. And that concludes this item, sir. Okay, we'll move on to item seven, uh, consent agenda. There was nothing moved from uh, the front to the back, so item eight is Ms. Russell's comments. Uh, uh, Chair, if you would, uh, just give me a couple minutes. Is Ms. Hoover still here? If you would, just come on up to the podium, please. Ms. Hoover, you're standing here today for one reason. You are an asset to Onslow County. What you have done for the citizens, the safety, the security of our citizens is phenomenal. Your staff has worked diligently. You have led your people. I cannot thank you enough. I cannot thank the emergency services that we have in Onslow County. I cannot thank the Onslow County Memorial Hospital and all the doctors that we have in this wonderful county. Our school board last night made a decision that is weighing heavily on everybody. You gave them the information and data that they needed to do the right thing. We have got to support each other in this pandemic. It's not gonna go away. This pandemic is not going away. So we've gotta use every tool that we have to make this happen. Ms. Hoover, you're working entirely too much. You have constantly and consistently logged in over 100 hours a week. I'm gonna make a motion that this board makes you go home. We need you. We need you healthy. We need your leadership. And I thank you. The citizens thank you. Ms. Russell thanks you. Now go home and get some rest. I make a motion to this lady to go home and get some rest. <laughs> I would second that motion, but I have some more I want to say. Christy, I, you know, I, I've been a commissioner now for 17 years and I've enjoyed being here. But one of the things that I have learned about the health department, I thought I knew it all. I thought I knew what there was about what you do. These three classes that we just took online, I think Jack Wright took it, I've took it, I think several of the commissioners have already done it. Some of them got to finish it yet. Got, got to get it done. But the thing about it is the statutory and the responsibility that you have for this community, the people need to understand that. You know, you work so hard for us and do such a good job for us, but just knowing the statutory and, and, and the stuff that you have to do, what you're responsible for is just amazing to me, and I'm glad I had to take those three classes because it told me a lot about what you do. I knew, I, I thought I knew a lot of, but I didn't know hardly anything. I, I only knew dropping the hat. That was about it, but I want to thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, and this whole board does. Thank you all very much. I don't think we can do a motion and a vote because not on the agenda, but you do work for <laughs> that woman right there, so yeah. she can tell you that what you That woman over there can make that so decision. So she can tell you what you need to do. Look, we appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Couldn't do it without you. Thank y'all very much. 
It's not me, it's, it's the staff that we have at the health department and we have a, a core team that is working very hard and have worked very hard for this county for a long time. And so we appreciate the support that we receive from our county administration, from our elected officials and from our partners in this community, whether it's the hospital or the schools or the school board, we couldn't do it by ourselves. and it's really not us. You know, I think that we all realize that, that for us, public health is part of our vocational calling. And so really, I, you know, I, I give much of the credit to, to those people that, that do the work at the health department. They're a great team and, and we appreciate y'all's recognition of that. We're going to so, do our best to try to um, do the vaccine promotion with, with the board like uh, some of the commissioners sure. suggested. I think, I think that's something that we need to do and I think that's uh, something we owe it to the community to show our leadership in. One of the things, Chrissy, um, well, I wanted to say about you, you know, I've said it many times in other past meetings, and it's true, that you know, every time I pick up the phone to call Sharon for an update or you know, what, what are we looking at and you know, what kind of stats we're looking at, I know she's, she's, she's calling you or Sherry's calling you to get all the information, but you know, watching you guys work in the health department, uh, I mean, let's, let's think about it. This has been February of, of 2020, and it is now September that you've been constantly working around the clock with COVID. And then we had that lull where we thought we might have gotten behind the eight ball and, and we're making progress and then we have the Delta variant come out and now we're short staffed and now we're working harder and harder and harder. And you've been there constantly. I don't, I don't even remember you taking a day off, maybe one uh, out of that whole time, but you're over there busting your, your rear end uh, to get the statistics, to get the statistics out there to the county. Now you can't give all the statistics and that's what's frustrating for me too because a lot of the county citizens don't understand that. We're not gonna sit there and mealy mouth break this down into you know how many females are positive and all this stuff. You know, we're giving you the cold hard facts and I appreciate you doing that and you're doing the best you can with your contract chat, uh, contact tracing um, and going back and verifying things. We even had glitches with the North Carolina department or health department showing certain things and you went back and said, that's not true. This person, you know, was not from Onslow County, was from Pender County, Duplin County. So I appreciate everything you've done and you deserve it, you really do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Russell. so much and we do try to send Chrissy home. We're not very successful some days, but um, I, I appreciate all of you acknowledging the incredible dedication and work that she's put into this. Um, I have several announcements. First of all, um, I've, I've learned just a few minutes ago, our uh, communications and production team will be available uh, within just a few minutes after the end of this meeting for anybody who would like to record um, or advocate with their story about why they took the vaccination. So we can do that today if you have time after the meeting and certainly if anyone else in the audience would like to join them um, after our commissioners, uh, we, we welcome you to do the same thing, to try to encourage our community to, to take this step so that we can move on from COVID in some measure at some point. Um, as most of you know, and this did come from Chrissy and her team, yesterday we reported seven new fatalities um, from COVID-19 just from over the weekend since Thursday. And that brought us to 199 fatalities of Onzo County citizens from COVID-19. We also had 734 new positive cases and I'm sure as of this morning, we're probably over 25,000 positive cases, and we're running at about 14.6% positive, which is higher than the state at 13.7% positive. Um, we do have 11 current clusters or outbreaks in Onslow County, and that's in congregate living settings, also in schools, daycares, and in workplaces. Um, just so uh, we acknowledge this too, um, it's not just, of course, public health that's working around the clock. Our 911 calls um, related to COVID-19 were up 164% in August as compared to last year. So uh, our 911 telecommunicators are working uh, furiously hard right now with COVID-19. Also, our calls to EMS went up 17% in August, over August of last year. And we are transporting more and more people to the hospitals um, 
I report to all of you the, the numbers that we get, both from Dr. Penny at Onsen Memorial and from Naval Hospital. They have been completely at their capacity, and that's when, as a community, we've got to pull together and do what we can, because if there's no place to go when you need emergent care, that's something that all of us will suffer from. Um, in addition to the COVID news, I wanted to also announce that under our American Rescue um, plan funding that all of you considered and passed a, a wonderful uh, diverse package of spending um, our plan to use this federal money on August 23rd. We have now produced the RFQ for the affordable housing grant and that $5 million grant for any, any developer who will bring um, affordable housing and qualify uh, under the statutes for that to Onslow County is eligible to apply for that $5 million grant. It is posted on our website. You can find it on the purchasing page, and I believe Kevin is also putting it on the front page of our website. Um, and that's all I have for now, unless you have questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Russell. We'll move to uh, Commissioner comments. I think I'll start with Commissioner Scott. Okay. Well, it's been a long and interesting morning. Uh, I thank the library staff. I'll be getting in, con in contact with you personally to elaborate on what I'm hoping that we can do. I thank you, Ms. Gates, for coming in and assisting us. Um, the COVID-19, uh, whenever you see my interview that I'm going to be doing, um, it's very personal. I take this very serious. Every day, I'm on the streets of Onslow County. I don't know from one day to the next on what location that I'm going to be at. But I know I'm going to be somewhere in Onslow County. For those of you who have not gotten your vaccine shot, I'm asking you to reconsider and do it. We need everyone to get vaccinated. And I don't know what else to say about that. But when you see my post, I'm going to give you some stuff that people don't know. But that's the only tool that we have. Last night, I attended a Board of Education meeting that I can tell you that I was proud to be able to sit in that chamber to watch seven professionals and a grouping staff led by Mr. Now, now, Dr. Now, Dr. Collins. It's phenomenal, the staffing that we have in the two governing bodies of this county, the municipalities that we have in this county, joining together to support and make Onslow County grow for the citizens that live within her boundaries. I'm proud of what we're doing. I'm proud of this staff. I'm proud of the hospitals. I'm proud of our law enforcement. That's all of them together. I'm proud of the leadership that we have, that we can join together and move forward for the betterment of Onslow County. It's a privilege to sit here. It's a privilege to serve in any capacity that we can. Onslow County has got openings job openings. We need bus drivers. We need custodial workers in our school systems. We need staffing here within Onslow County. I'm asking you to apply for those positions and come to work for us. Be part of the first line of defense because I truly believe that our municipality staffs, the staffs that we, that we have on our books, we are the first line. And I thank you for everybody that does it. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve. But most of all, I want to thank God for giving us the ability to do his work openly. And I thank you all for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bennett. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate everybody that came for the public comments today. It is, I'm sure, intimidating to, to stand up there at that podium, but uh, Ms. Judy, you didn't uh, seem nervous at all, so we appreciate your comments. Um, and Isabel Gray, we thank you for, for being here tonight, and uh, or this morning, I forget, and uh, talking about our library. We have a great library. Um, the... Uh, the $38 million that we got from the AR uh, American Rescue Plan has been, uh, we've worked hard to put together a budget for that money. And, and the fact is that we're able to use almost $23 million of that money to, um, to replace county taxpayer uh, property tax funds uh, for things that we would have had to do over the next few years. Um, I want to mention the $11 million expansion of the Emergency Operations Center that we need to do when we found out during Hurricane Florence was absolutely necessary. Um, $7.5 million that we're able to use for the expansion of the landfill that all of our citizens would be paying for in the future in, in an increased tipping fees, and $4.4 million for senior services that, um, that we're able to improve the building and, um, and do something uh, to help our seniors. Uh, we intentionally uh, have given the citizens two more weeks so we can hear their input and hear their, uh, their opinions. Um, I'm always interested in what the citizens think. Um, I'm open to answer questions and to talk to people. My phone number's out there. They can call me or they can text me or email me. I'd be glad to answer questions. Uh, we may never all agree on everything, but uh, we can at least get the information out so people can know what the facts are. So if people have questions, you're welcome to call me. I um, appreciate everybody being here today. Hope you have a great day. Thank you. Commissioner Buchanan. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, just a couple things. Uh, we got to remember our falling off military from Afghanistan. It's real important to remember them. But another thing, too, our troops are coming back next week. We think it's Tuesday. They should be flying into Cherry Point. I, I got some information on that. And they do, let's do everything we can to welcome them back out of Afghanistan. I think it's a 24th Mew. I think that's the name of it. The facility, the military people that went out and came back. But they're due back in Cherry Point, I believe, next Tuesday. And I think our staff is uh, going to try to help us get that out to the public. But we need to make sure we take care of our military. This town means so much to the military and, and to the citizens of Onslow County. And these troops mean a lot to all of us, especially some of us like this old fellow sitting up here who's a senior citizen. I'll be 75 on Sunday, so I'm one of them senior people that's been around a while. But the key, the key thing, thing is that we love this county, we love our employees, and it's just a great place to live and play, and it's just an outstanding community to live in. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Knapp? No, I just wanted to reemphasize um, how amazed I am with Christine Hoover in the health department and the staff for working the COVID problem. I mean, COVID is a real issue, folks, and people don't understand that. And, and you know, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you on Facebook or anywhere else about if you're vaccinated, can you get infected? I think we all can research it on our own and know what the answers are, okay? But, you know, you know, if you're vaccinated, yes, you can get infected with COVID. You know, does it lessen the, or does it lessen the severity of the symptoms? I don't know because I haven't had it. But I've talked to other people who said that it has. So we don't have all the answers to COVID-19, but we need to take the proper precautions. And that's why I'm emphasizing that everybody get out there. If you want to get that vaccination, please, you know, for your, your sake, for your family's sake, for your neighbor's sake. If it does work in the sense that it lessens the severity of the symptoms, get it done. Okay, like I said, I'd rather have th that than not, not be vaccinated and get full-blown COVID and end up in a hospital. I had two co-workers in the hospital with COVID. They were unvaccinated. Okay, one was in the COVID ward and his wife was in the COVID ward ICU with a ventilator. Luckily, she's on a ventilator and she survived. And now she's home resting comfortably. So what does that tell you? The first thing he said to me when he got out of the hospital and he got back to work after being cleared after 14 days, he says, in 30 days, I'm getting my vaccination. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, 
What does that tell you? Now, to me, I've been vaccinated all my life since a kid as a dependent and as in a military member and as an NCIS agent. And I know Hans can attest to that in his military career. We've all been vaccinated up and down. Okay, so maybe it's just easy for us. We, we're used to it. But, you know, if you're on that fence, please take the time to get vaccinated. Take the time to do what you can. You know, you got a lot of health officials shaking their head. Forget what Fossey says, okay? Fossey's going to jail anyway. Just forget what he has to say. But listen to what the CDC has to say and some other people. Listen to your local um, health professionals. Listen to them and see what they say. But like Jack used to say, talk to your provider. Talk to your provider and ask them or her if it's prudent to get the vaccination, especially if you have any underlying conditions. That's the more, most important thing. If you don't trust your doctor, I don't know who you can trust. Don't trust me. I'm not a doctor. Okay, I couldn't tell you the first thing about medicine, but I know that I, the vaccine does work, at least in my personal situation. The other thing is, it's good to see you, Alan. You kind of surprised me today. I, I didn't know you were going to walk in here, but uh, it really is good to see you, Alan, and, and some of the comments you made were right on. And uh, yeah, you're looking good. You're looking good for an old man. <laughs> so, but, and one other thing I just want to emphasize with uh, Paul Buchanan emphasize, one of the things that gets me mad every night and I know some of you don't understand this, and I know some of you do, is I watch the news and I watch about Afghanistan. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading about the Pineapple Express, about some retired military people going in across the border and rescuing Americans. There are six aircrafts full of Americans on a tarmac at the airport in Afghanistan. Now think about that, six of them. The Taliban wearing our uniforms, carrying our weapons, <laughs> driving our Amtraks, guarding them and not letting them leave. Okay, that, I don't know if that makes you sick. It makes me sick to my stomach, being a vet, my dad being a Korean and Vietnam vet, and I know Paul's a Vietnam vet. That makes me sick. And I have a lot of friends here who are fathers of retired uh, USMC members. That's pathetic. I mean, we should bring all those Americans home, and you should be praying for these people to come home safely because they're in a treacherous situation right now. And if you're not angered by it as an American, I, I, I don't know what, what, what can anger you then, okay? So please pray for them, and I just want to thank everybody for coming out uh, this morning to, um, to share our meeting with us, and I hope you have a safe day. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chairman? <coughs> just want to clarify something. Commissioner Knapp said Fauci, not Foster. <laughs> I did what? I'm not, I'm not going to jail. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I appreciate Commu Commissioner Buchanan talking about his 75th birthday. He and I talked about his first U.S. history book. So it was two of the greatest chapters he ever read about the history of a country. Um, early on, we appreciate that and your wisdom there. But um, Ms. Hoover, we appreciate what you've done with your staff and, um, and your staff. It's just been incredible. Um, a lot of work. And there's a guy named Joshua Metcalf. He's written several books out there. And uh, one of them is Chop Wood and Carry Water. And y'all have been chopping a lot of wood and carrying a lot of water. From one of his other books, he had a, a quote, and I'm just going to use three pieces of it. And I think that summarizes what we face in this world today. Love people. Serve people and provide value to people. We get up those three days and we those do those three things, then the outcome is going to be what it, we need it to be. So love, serve, and provide value. The other part is we know we got folks coming back home from their service, but remember Saturday is 20 years since September 11th. And uh, we need to stop a moment on Saturday and remember that day and the families that are still being impacted. I can't think of the gentleman's name, but right now he's, he's walking the trail through the locations and raising money, tunnels to towers, I believe is what it is. Um, lots of lives changed that day. And I think uh, one of the magazines had several kids um, that had not yet entered the world when they lost their fathers on 9-11. And those kids are 20 years old almost now. Um, so as we face COVID, as we face uncertainty, understand that um, God's with us. And if we love people, serve people, and provide value, tomorrow is going to be a bright, shining day. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. I'm not going to be too long. Uh, I'm going to say I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.